Today in the Texas Tribune Weekend Insider. As David Dearhurst and Ted Cruz crank up their campaigns heading toward the July runoff election for U.S. Senate, the two candidates will spend most of their time touting their own accomplishments and criticizing their opponent's record. But just how different are these men on the issues, and where does that leave voters? Then we hear from reporter Julian Aguilar on his way to cover Mexico's presidential election. He brings us reaction from the road on what a new president may mean to this violence-torn nation. Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst and former Texas Solicitor General Ted Cruz are in an intense, heated race for uh, the Republican nomination for U.S. Senate. And yet, both of them agree on nearly all the major issues that could come up before the Senate. In a debate last week, uh, they agreed on almost every issue that came up. They were even asked at one point to name a policy issue where their opponent would vote differently, and neither of them identified one. So that's forced the race to be more about their records and their past experiences than you know, how they would vote in the Senate or really any issues that might come up in the Senate. Uh, Dewars has been saying that he has a legislative experience to get things done in Washington. And Cruz has been saying he's more of a fighter and Dewhurst is a compromiser and that's why voters should pick Cruz over Dewhurst. I think this leaves the voters uh, facing a very bitter uh, an ugly contest over the next few weeks that's so gonna have a lot of mutt slinging and very little focus on issues. This is reporter Julian Aguilar reporting on the road currently in Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, just took a bus from Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas. And uh, depending on who you talk to, there's different reactions on Sunday's election. You know, the bottom line is six years later, more than 50,000 people dead, a smear on Mexico's image as a developing nation. Uh, but at the same time, Texas is number one trade partner. Uh, the United States is number two trade partner and um, an important neighbor, however you want to slice it. So um, the people here are a mixed bag of hope and fear. This morning, I was talking to a cab driver that said that there were rumors that Nuevo Laredo was going to see some action, and as we're driving to the bus stop, he's pointing to a bridge where they hung three people you know, a couple of days ago. He points to another underpass where they hung six people a couple of days ago. Um, at night, the city is a, uh, it's a ghost town. Um, then you come here to Monterrey, and it uh, seems like business as usual. Everybody says, be careful, uh, but, I mean, it's a, it's a metropolis here, and um, it's daylight right now. We'll see what it uh, looks like at night. But um, a lot of people are curious. Texas lawmakers have uh, mixed feelings about the election. Some people are uh, kind of hesitant about what happens if the former governor of the state of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, wins the presidency, which um, a lot of people expect he will uh, is going to do. Take um, Congressman Michael McCall, on the other hand. He, is, uh, he told me he's a little worried if the, uh, the PRI, the Institutional Revolutionary Party that held power for 70 years, if they come back because... Uh, that was the party that was known for corruption and known for making deals with the cartels. Um, but a couple of folks I spoke with in Nuevo Laredo yesterday said, you know what, if it goes back to the old way, but it means the streets are safer and we can go out after sunset, then, you know, we might go ahead and take that. But the elections are Sunday and everybody's hoping for not only a clean election, but a peaceful one. 